Okay, so gyms are back open, which means for those who train, it's time to get back at it. And I have had two sessions already in a new gym. I left the last because it wasn't open and enough was enough, and I just had to get get going again. So I'm down in the industrial state, personal health and fitness. It's so low key. It's so you know, it's so much smaller than the large center. There's only been two or three people here in total any time I've been here. So it's it's really low key and homey. So if you need a low key gym, if you're too you know nervous or anxious to go in a big gym like the last center, this is the place for you. Like a shameless plug, but. GA um, conditioning video. Um, and I know people who play GA will be looking at me going, "What is he talking about?" He was woeful at football. They have a point, like, you know, although I wasn't good, I was starting on the bench every game and I was just woeful, really. Um, plastic, plastic, I get called that a lot, but moving from Jumrah to Killing Hart. I don't really care, like, but um, anyway, sidetracked. This will be a conditioning video for speed, power, strength, agility, just an overall getting your aerobic capacity back up again. Um, for the new season coming in. Um, I don't even know when it's coming in. It'll be coming in soon though. Um, so, um, excuse me for being out of breath as well. Excuse me for being out of breath as well. Um, I just had my own session. I, um, I'm so unfit. But anyway, uh, this session will be mainly for gaining power, like I said. Some more flexibility, agility, speed. Um, because in the modern game of football anyway, no matter where you play, you're going to need speed, power and agility. So uh, the exercise I'm going to go through today will be primarily structured around that and um, just improving overall performance. It's not so much strength training, it's more so speed and power and being quick off the mark and being faster than whoever you're marking, which is, if you have that on someone, skill comes second. If you have speed on someone, skill will always come second, in my opinion anyway. Okay, so first exercise, this is split squats. Now you can do this with a dumbbell or like I'm using here, the TRX row. Um, basically what it does is time under tension. So you're lowering down, putting that tension on the quad and exploding back up. P pretty much the same as your muscles will doing in a match, you're running and then boom, you're exploding quick off the mark. It's, it's called mind muscle connection. As soon as you practice it in the gym, slow repetitions on the way down and boom, quick off the mark, off the tension reps. Your muscles will adapt and that's the key to uh, gaining speed and power and being quick off the mark from a standing position or accelerating uh, onwards okay I know I would step in if they're different but I'm just editing this and you can't see the bench I'm squatting down and touching a bench and exploding back up um, those are just box squats uh, you can't see the bench but uh, yeah just slightly touch it and then explode back up it's exactly the same thing these are all the same principles and obviously here there is no weights on the barbell it's just that's just simply because I had my own session uh, before the hand so obviously if you feel free using no weights on the barbell that's fine but if you're a little more advanced in the gym then you can throw on whatever you want in there uh, I'd recommend going as light as possible because it's very difficult to go slow repetitions on the way down with a heavier weight and explode back up but the lighter the weight the better um, you know lifting heavy doesn't really help performance as much it will in a, if you're very very experienced but anyone under the age of 21 probably won't be at that level so um, yeah moderate light to moderate weight because it's easy to uh, slide back down and go exploding up again so um, don't injure yourself now these are simply lunges the only thing I can uh, give tips on here is just when you're pressing back up on your way up press through your heel so there's more tension on your quad and uh, your glutes but press up through your heel on your way up and again keep it slow keep it slow let the muscle fibers tear I know that sounds bad but let the microfibers tear away so they can repair stronger and more efficient so take it slowly don't have to go fast take it slow let the burn set in the feel the burn as everyone talks about let that set in when that's setting in that's a good sign so keep that in mind yeah oh god i just look like a right tit here anyway these are dumbbell burpees um anyone who's trained before knows burpees are the worst and these are even worse there's a place reserved in hell for the person who invented this um as you can see i look ridiculous here i look like i've just came off a four-week binge in ibiza or something 
Um, I'm going to use a disclaimer that I was at the end of my session and I was tired, but yeah, it doesn't really look like it. It is just ridiculous. Anyway, these are just a killer for calories and a killer for burning fats at the end of a session. Uh, it's best to do them when you're fatigued because you reap the rewards more because your body's just begging for rest, but you're going to keep pushing it and that's when you get the best results. That's when you get the best bang for your buck um, at the end of the session. So I recommend doing them upon completion uh, when you're most fatigued like I am here. Finally, we're finishing with spider push-ups. Now these are difficult as well, but they're engaging your obliques, your core, your arms, your chest, pretty much everything. It's a all-in-one sort of dig. And uh, again, I recommend doing it when you're finished because those are the hardest ones in your body. It's just aching. So uh, I recommend doing them at the end of the session. So that's all I'm going to do. That's going to be the end of the video. It probably dragged on a bit longer than it should have, but I don't want to leave any people short. Um, of course, there are a few exercises you can uh, implement yourself. Deadlifts, um, just normal squats if you want, box jumps, um, all these things. Um, you know, you don't have to follow this. You know, I'm not saying this is the only way. There are lots of other ones. I'm just giving you the ones that I think could be most beneficial and accessible, even though some of them are very difficult. That's how you're going to get better. You're going to be doing the difficult ones and then you'll progress and soon the difficult ones will be the easy ones and you'll be a top notch and you'll be a notch above everybody else on the Gaelic pitch. So, um, no, disclaimer as well. It applies to rugby players as well because it's very similar sports in terms of physical activity. So yeah, for rugby players, I don't know much about rugby, I don't know the positions or anything, but I mean, you can use this as well. Um, so yeah, it's for everyone. And that's just basically wrapping up. Um, I might do a post-lockdown training just for people trying to get back into general fitness. Um, but this one, because I got the most votes, um, it was just for GEA slash rugby players. Um, to try and build them back in to the season and hopefully they don't feel too out of shape or too miserable um, in their competitions uh, because of lockdown and the restrictions of that so I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me